Spain is one of the great European destinations. I mean, first of all, you come into the capital city of Madrid, which is truly a world-class city and one of my favorite European cities. It's got terrific architecture, friendly people, great cuisine, great wines, of course. And then hop a plane down to Granada, which is only an hour flight, and you're right on the edge of the Mediterranean and you're in the prime Ibex country. And this chance to come down and hunt Ibex in, in southern Spain, very different from the first place I hunted in Spain, which was north of, of Madrid, hunting driven partridge. So to come down here, see a very different part of the country, very different part of the world, a very old relic kind of place, was really a treat. And, and to come out here and, and walk these ancient trails that have been carved for centuries and stalk these animals that have been hunted for centuries was a chance to connect with a, a piece of history that most people will never even see. So, how old is that ruin right there? It's, uh, it was built before 19, uh, 19, 1492. 1492, before Columbus. Before our continent was discovered. <laughs> really? All right. <laughs> This is what the ibex eats. It's like an acorn. It yeah. basically is an acorn of some variety. It's very fat food. All it's right. very proteinic. It's uh, what they eat in this season before the winter, you know? Mm -hmm. With this kind of food, they get a lot of fat. And that's what the wild boar are eating yeah. too, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the wild okay. boars. Yeah. Can you eat them? Mm, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I could. Yeah, you could, but you won't. <laughs> There's four distinct subspecies of ibex in Spain. We happen to be hunting the southern ibex, which is sort of the mid-range in terms of size. And the horn formation is different on each one of these. The southern comes up and, and kind of curls back and, and drops in. And uh, some come out more like an antenna almost. And it's a great trophy just because of the place where they live. You know, they're always going to be in places that are rugged, inaccessible. So you're going to have to earn a trophy if you're going to get one. He's been seeing a good male right up here. He wasn't here. He's pulling. I went to your foot. Well, looking at that country, I can see why he's still a good male. That'd be pretty, pretty tough hiking right there. God, talk about stunning country, though. Look at that. Jeez, it's beautiful. At first glance, you wouldn't see anything. And then all of a sudden, one by one, you see a little bit of movement and just a turn of horn and uh, you'd spot them. They'd be bedded down sometimes, sometimes just standing there looking at you like, who are you and why are you here? Ah, this is some kind of country. Hey, Chris, there's a good meal over there. Where? Where are you looking? Where from that notch? On the trunk, the tree, the tree trunk against the wall. The first on the left. He's standing, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. looking got for him, us. Got him, got him. Is he standing? Looks like he's bedded down. He's standing there. He's lying on the floor. Yeah, he's lying on the floor. Looks pretty good. It's a beautiful man. Get down and have a look here. A little more stable rest. How far do you figure that is? About 300 meters. 250 yards, maybe. Boy, do they blend in well, though, don't they? Yeah. I don't know how you get them out of there. I mean, you'd have to go all the way around, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Even if you made the shot? Do you think he's big enough? I think we can look for something even bigger, yeah? A little bit bigger. He you know where he is? He's got his address, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Chris, one, two, three good Ibex. Yeah. Your call. You make the plan, right. Captain. I first met Alfonso on my inaugural driven bird shoot here. He had a little booklet full of photographs from this country and full of all the photos of, of the animals he had taken that year. And 
Here's a guy who's taken more than 500 Ibex in his career. And to watch him hunt, you would swear to God it was the first time he'd ever gone out. I mean, he's got that kind of enthusiasm. And you can't help but get excited about being around somebody like that. I like this Ibex, beautiful Ibex, okay. We spotted a, a whole band of really good Ibex. We saw three different good rams. And because of the terrain, because we're in the rut right now as well, these animals are moving constantly. So the way they work this is they hunt in teams. And basically Alfonso determined, look, we don't have a lot of time. Sun's going down here. This is probably the best one. And oh, by the way, it happens to be in the best position to try and get up there. Two female here, okay? The Ibex in this direction. If the, if the female running, the Ibex running also. Yeah, right. Okay. So we broke off and, and Pedro stayed behind and he kept the binoculars on the, on the ram and he had a radio. And by the time we got all the way around, which took us about a half hour, you know, he had moved, changed positions pretty radically. So we were able to get down and, and get into position. Repito, macho chico, donde esta? This is the little Ibex. Y va para arriba, va para arriba. Es que no son castaños, son chaparras. You see the ibex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, behind the female. When you walk, okay? Let's get it steady. Then we'll get it set up. Okay. Mike down? No. Oh. One moment. Now, now, now it's a good moment. Okay, okay, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Very good. Okay. <laughs> okay, Christian, very good shoot. Oh, yeah, because the Ibex. Yeah, he was ready to go, wasn't yes. he? Yes. <laughs> very good. And very, very good Ibex, sorry? That's a beauty. Oh, Buddy. very good. <laughs> so they go down the valley. Congratulations, please, because it's thank very you, good animals, you. eh? And the home, perfect, very thick. That's because he had perfect. attitude. This guy was a fighter yes. all the way, wasn't he? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine years old. Nine years old? Very good, very good. Well, thanks again, partner. Congratulations. <laughs> very good. Thank, thank you very in. much, Paco. Yeah. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. When you come to a country and you know a little bit about it secondhand through some reading, you kind of have a preconceived notion of what you're going to see. And I think in the case of the Mediterranean part of Spain, it's really lived up to everything I expected. I expected to see these really quaint, you know, whitewashed villages carved into the rocks. And, and uh, to come here and actually see that firsthand was like stepping inside the pages of National Geographic. I mean, it was a, a really neat experience. And I think one of the real things that's compelling about this kind of hunting is the chance to go and see different country. It isn't just about taking the animal. The animal is part of it. The animal is the excuse to make the trip in the first place, but it's really the chance to see different lands, to meet different people, to explore different cultures. And it's a pretty small planet. And at the end of the day, you know, I think the most valuable thing you can own is, is experience.